What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we're back with a brand new edition of My Damn Thoughts, and it is a very historical one. It is a great one. We have done multiple videos on this set already, man, but I could not let this set pass us by. It's been a little bit now since this wave has been out. It hasn't hit retail. I know it'll be a while to it hits retail, but I could not let WWE Elite Series 100 pass by without doing a full throttle My Damn Thoughts episode. If you guys don't know what My Damn Thoughts is, it is the episodic series here on the channel where we take a WWE Elite Wave, an AEW Unmatched Wave, an AEW Unrivaled Wave. We take it, we rank it from worst to best in terms of each individual figure. We break down the set, we give some details about the set maybe you didn't know, and just kind of break everything down. If you guys would like to see this full set reviewed in its entirety, from accessories to packaging to everything, we did a couple videos on the channel. We did some two-in-one reviews as well as a full breakdown set review of the entire thing. If you guys would like to check that out, definitely go do so. But today, man, we have my damn thoughts. We're going to break down this set. Let's shut the hell up, dive into it, and break down WWE Elite Series 100. Now, typically, we start off these My Damn Thoughts episodes with my first thoughts, and my first thoughts of Elite 100 were that it was it was disappointing, man. I was disappointed when I got this scene. You know, we, we saw it on the panel, I think. It was like the Mattel WWE reveal panel. I think we saw it first at San Diego Comic-Con last year in July, or I think it's July. I don't think it's June. I think it is July. They did a Mattel WWE reveal in 2022 of what to come and they revealed WWE Elite 100 and they posted it up. I think Ringside posted it and then we got some render images and it just, even to this day, and I don't know if it'll ever scream 100, Elite 100, I've just been disappointed with it. I think it has some underrated bangers in here. I think we got some great stuff. I think that the first time in the line championships that you get in here, every single figure comes with a first time in the line championship. The Brahma Bull championship is on the rock. That's how I have him on the shelf. So, I mean, it is awesome that we got first time in the line championships. I think it's fantastic, but but at the same time, man, it just, it was disappointing. It just wasn't what I expected out of Elite 100, and I think a lot of people would probably tell you that same thing, but having it in hand, I do like it more than I initially thought, but we're gonna get into that even deeper, but I had to get into my thir first thoughts, which is obviously being disappointed in this wave. I think a lot of people were probably there with me, and again, I've gone on and on about it. If you guys wanna look at different videos on the channel, I, I go in depth of that deeper, but we get into the shelf warmer in the set. Who's gonna be catching fire on the pegs? Who's gonna be sitting there for months on in on the shelf until they eventually go out to clearance. Well, if I had to pick one figure now, you guys will notice that this Becky Lynch head sculpt is not accurate. This is not the head sculpt it came with, but Becky Lynch is going to be the shelf warmer in the set, I think. I think she's going to be the shelf warmer. I think that, I think you have some potential shelf warmers and some others, but as far as my experience goes, man, I think Becky Lynch, you know, women's figures don't sell as well as the men's. It's been documented. We've seen it multiple times, and I just think that her figure, I don't think any of these figures necessarily are going to just rot on shelves because they all have a championship so maybe if you want to increase figure sales, give them some belts. But I think Becky Lynch will be the shelf warmer in the set, unfortunately. Now, when we get into the hottest figure in the set, I think this can go one of two ways. It's either going to be this Mac Daddy right here, Andre the Giant, or it's going to be John Cena. Now, I think that, you know, Andre's obviously a beautiful looking figure. I think that he is going to play into tons of collectors' arms. Even if you're just a regular action figure collector, I think you'll love this Andre. But John Cena, he is going to, you know, he always sells well anytime he's at retail. It is a flashback look of him but I still think that that even helps him on the shelf because you're going to have those flashback collectors of Cena, the current collectors of Cena, the kids. Everybody's going to be wanting John Cena, of course. So I can see it being one of these two figures, but I think it will be one of these two. I, you know, I, I think that The Rock, maybe he may, you know, hinge on that being with the Brahma Bull Championship, but I think the Andre the Giant and the John Cena figures will be the hottest figures in this set. When you talk about the Chase figure in the set, however, you do have to get into Andre the Giant. Now you have this plaid version here, which is very beautiful. And then you have this like light blue cyan colored jacket with teal and all kinds of cool stuff going on. That's a really cool figure in itself. And that is one that I am most definitely going to track down when I uh, when I get a chance to. I will be chasing after that. But uh, Andre the Giant's the chase. Was he the best chase? I, I don't know. You know, did we need two Andres in suit? I don't know. But you know, who am I? You know, lights are too bright for me. I think Ray could have been a cool one. I think The Rock could have been cool. Hell, even Stunning Steve could have been cool. Yeah, I mean, John. John Cena would have been my first pick, but what all could they have done? I guess different armbands, but or maybe different shorts color with different armbands. Just same figure, maybe change some deco. But you know, the Andre the Giant Chase is cool, and I love this figure a lot. So you know, I guess the more the merrier when it comes to Andre the Giant in Elite Series 100. Now getting into the figure with the best head sculpt, honestly, not a lot of people contending for this thing, man. I think the whole wave kind of missed the mark on the head sculpts, except for one guy, and that's gonna be the goat over here. Now while I don't think this is really a 2005 John Cena 
head sculpt. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it looks like John Cena from 2005. This is absolutely not a head sculpt from 2005 of John Cena. I still think it looks like John Cena. I like the likeness. I think you could use this on a lot of John Cena's. It's just, it's not 05, but it's still a hell of a lot better than, than the Becky Lynch head sculpt, than the Stunning Steve head sculpt, than the Rock head sculpt. The Andre the Giant head sculpt is solid, but I feel like it's almost like a bunch of his other ones, or it's very similar to one specifically, but it's a damn good one, but I think the John Cena overall looks more like John Cena himself. Even if it doesn't match the era, I still think it's a damn good head sculpt, and I'll be using this head sculpt in my collection, so I think he has the best head sculpt overall. Now, getting into the figure with the best articulation, I think only two figures really qualify here. I mean, you might have an argument for a third, but I think it's got to be Rey Mysterio, man. Rey Mysterio's figures feel so excellent in the hand. If you told me, you know, Andre the Giant's damn good as well, I'd be right there with you. He's a massive figure, but he feels so good in the hand, man. Like, look at this. Look at this. Look at the, the thigh cut, the double jointed knee. You have a beautiful split ball joint. He's got the ab crunch. He's got double jointed arms. Buttery smooth shoulders. I mean, this Andre can pose around with the best of them, and I, I think he's he's so damn good, but the Rey Mysterio is the same exact way, except he's much smaller. So, you know, you get your double jointedness. You get your great stuff in here. I did put smaller hands on him, so that's not accurate, but makes the figure look better, but it's just wild. You have, like, a tall, massive guy and then a short, you know, really small guy, and they're both just opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of size, but equally great articulation and great feel in the hand, which comes into our ranking, so that's going to be great as well, but both of these figures feel the best in the hand. If you're looking for the best figure out of this set to move around, it's one of these two, and there's no no, no doubts about that in my brain. Now, you want it, when you want to talk about the worst articulation, Brad, you're going to have to get into the Becky Lynch figure. Now, as most of you know, the women's figures have gotten a whole lot better. This still poses around pretty solid. The biggest issue I have is her upper torso is kind of like loose, as you guys can see here. There's not much of a real ab crunch. The shoulders get stuck sometimes. The double jointed arms are fine. They're a bit stiff as well, but they're not too, too bad. But these basic feet that they always give to women's figures, why can we not get elite women feet that have ankle pivot? They never give the women's figures ankle pivot, and they always have this basic up and down motion. They never have an ankle rocker or anything, and it makes them hard to stand up, and it really limits them, man. It makes it feel worse in the hand. It makes it literally a less enjoyable experience because of that. So that is something that I would like to change about the women's figures, but Becky Lynch has the worst articulation. I wouldn't say it's not even close, but in this case, it really isn't. I think John Cena probably is the next worst just because of his ankles and that, like, decade-old ankle mold. Like, for the love of God, can we fix it? Now, getting into the best accessory in this entire WWE Elite 100 set, man, you think I'm gonna talk about cloth goods, but I'm actually gonna talk about this Brahma Bull Championship. This Brahma Bull Championship is gorgeous. It looks so good. It looks just like the Brahma Bull Championship. I think it was such a cool inclusion. You know, it's a championship we've been missing from the collection. I think the side plates are really detailed. This is probably my favorite championship from the entire lot. I thought the women's championship was damn good, but we've, I mean, we've seen like, so, you know, I know it's more accurate. It's got, le you know, more details and things like that, but I still think the Brahma Bull Championship does clear in this moment, and I like this as the best accessory in the full wave. You do have some really cool stuff. The Rock's jersey, Stunning Steve's robe, things like that. The Spinner WWE Championship, but there's lots of things wrong with that, and I, I like this Rock Brahma Bull Championship. Been waiting on this one. Now it is time to rank this set from worst to best, and to do so, we're going to have to get these guys off the screen so I can go through the criteria for the MDT rankings in these My Damn Thoughts episodes. So, criteria that goes into the ranking, things that I consider when ranking this entire wave. First of all, it's going to be excitement level for the figure. How excited was I for the figure? How shocked was I or how pleased was I with the figure once I received it in hand? Posability, how it feels in the hand. Does it replicate the character that it's trying to portray? Does it look like the character jumped off my TV screen into my hand? Overall enjoyment, accessories, head sculpt, all these things, and of course, personal feelings, personal nostalgia, things of that nature do come into the ranking as well, which is, you know, did that, you know, it's my ranking, so make your own ranking, by God. Nonetheless, man, let's start off at the bottom of the ranking for Elite Series 100, and coming into the number six spot is no shocker, it's gonna be Becky Lynch. I mean, what did you want, Brad? You know, what are you, what are you supposed to do? Becky Lynch, not a bad women's figure. I think if she was in, like, if you, if you took her, and I don't know, this is a cool idea for a video, but if you took her figure from this wave and then compared it to the last 10 or 20 Elite Series waves of women's figure, it may be near the top. Not better, not, not the best ever, but it would still rank better than some of the ones we've seen in the past. Maybe, at least off the top of my dome. I don't know, that's a good women, you know, that's a good ranking video, maybe. Ranking every Elite women's figure ever. Throwing the ultimates in there as well. Coming in at number five, I 
went with The Rock. Now, this may be shocking to you, especially when you consider that I put the WrestleMania Elite Rock in my number four, number overall elite of 2022 in the WrestleMania 18 gear, but that head sculpt was phenomenal. It was a perfect rock figure from head to toe. This one, however, is not perfect. It's a mismatch of all times of different rocks. The head sculpt is dreadful. I do not like it. Rock never smiled during this era. You know, I don't, I don't like it whatsoever there. It's a repeat of the same jersey we've seen, just different colors. And we've seen the top talents, the WrestleMania Elite, I mean, multiple Elite Rocks just like this. And I do love the Rock formula, don't get me wrong, but it's just not as good as the other figures in the set, which is why he comes at the number five spot. Coming at the number four spot, man, it, it kind of was easy at this juncture. You know, this figure, a lot of people loved it, but I just wasn't feeling it that much. And that's going to be the Stunning Steve figure, man. The Stunning Steve figure, not bad whatsoever. You know, I like the gear, even though it may not be the most accurate. I like the championship. I like the robe. I just don't, like, the figure just doesn't remind me of Stunning Steve. You know what I mean? I just don't feel like the head sculpt's that great, in my personal opinion. I don't have a real big attachment to Stunning Steve. Now, had this been, you know, late 90s Stone Cold Steve Austin, probably would have been number one. Who knows? You know what I mean? So, you know, just different things factor into that, but Stunning Steve did come into the number four spot. Coming in at number three is going to be the Rey Mysterio. A damn good figure. I love the championship. I don't like... Apparently, this figure's not accurate. Like, some of the colors aren't right. You know, the wrist gauntlets aren't right. It's supposed to be white wrist tape, I think, but I think this is more toyetic. You know, the bicep bands are kind of weird with the paint. Not my favorite head sculpt ever. I feel like his neck's a bit stumpy, but he feels fantastic in the hand, and I like him more than the rest of these figures. So, Rey Mysterio comes in at number three for me. And coming in at two and one, number two is going to be Elite 100 John Cena. I mean, it kind of speaks for itself. You know, my favorite wrestler of all time. My favorite era of John Cena as well. Like, right? Like, I love me some Dr. Thugonomics. Obviously, he is my favorite wrestler of all time. But right there, 2005 Chain Gang John Cena is my GOAT right there. And this hits me right in the, in the feels. Like, this is everything John Cena for me. But I hate the decade-old articulation and mold. I would have love to seeing the chain gang baseball jersey with this i don't think that the head sculpt is completely accurate to 2005 however i still would want it over the rest of these figures and so you know it's it's definitely better than those in my opinion but it does not beat the number one figure which i'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now we're in january 2023 this figure is going to be in the top 10 wwe elites of 2023 it may be in the top five of elites of 2023 that's the elite 100 andre the giant figure is absolutely magical if you do not own it go get it right now it is so good feels fantastic in the hand looks fantastic such a unique piece love the plaid jacket i mean you got so many great things going on with that andre the giant it includes the championship that he would have won in 84 it is just so good and i had to put him in my number one there's if anybody else says that another figure is number one they're wrong they're they're just wrong I, I don't know what to tell you but if i was overall rating this set out of 10 1 to 10, if somebody put a gun to my head, injected truth serum in my, into my neck and said, yo, 1 to 10, how good is this set? I would give it a 7 ranking out of 10. A 7 out of 10. I think that it's a solid set, but it is nothing groundbreaking out of this world. I think that it's a solid set. I like the titles. I like everything about it, but in my underwhelmed state, I'm going to go 7 out of 10. Maybe a 7.5 on a good day, but yeah, I'd, I'd go 7 out of 10. However, that is going to wrap up this My Damn Thoughts episode of WWE Elite Series 100 man we ranked it from worst to best in my personal opinion i gave you all of my thoughts on this set and that is going to wrap it all up man i'd love to know down in the comment section below what your personal feelings are towards this set do you guys think that it is one of the best sets do you think it's one of the worst sets i am still in the background working on my ranking of every single wwe elite series set from worst to best 100 to number one and we'll see what comes of that and break down everything that is pretty much going to wrap up this my damn thoughts episode man thank you guys so very much for watching do not forget to let me know your thoughts down below follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one. And remember, these are my damn thoughts. Don't ever